Hi, this is Dan here. I hope you're doing well today. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you one of the best bass lines ever. I love this one. It's Ain't No Stopping Us Now, McFadden and Whitehead song, played by Jimmy Williams on bass. So I'm just going to dive into it. It has an intro and a sort of bridge section, but the main iconic bass line goes like this. I urge you to listen to the original. You'll hear quite a lot of different variations going on, but this is what I've gone for in the tab, and we'll go through it step by step. I'm gonna break down a little bit later the theory behind this, some of the patterns, and also a couple of fills that you can add in if you're playing this live, but this is how it goes. We've got a B flat to start with. So B flat, and then we go to an A flat on the sixth fret of the D string. There's a bit of a shift there with the first finger. We're coming down to an F here. Now I'm playing that with my little finger. You can use your third finger if you want. This is on to the eighth fret of the A string. Then after this, we've got a slide. Again, two options for this. So I'm sliding out with my little finger here and I'm keeping the thumb at the back of the neck and I'm sort of twisting it around to shoot that little finger up the two frets it needs to go. And then you've got to return. But you could also use your third finger if you want. Like that. Same method or slide up a bit and then just jump back a bit. So back to that A flat afterwards. Then we've got this lovely chromatic note that doesn't belong to the key, but it just leads very nicely to the C. Like I said, there's a lot of different variations, but here we've got the B, flat, uh, the B and then a C followed by a ghost note. I'll play that slowly. So what you want to do when you do the ghost note, you're lifting off the note, still in contact with the string and plucking to get that, that sound. But I sometimes use more than one finger so that I don't get a harmonic. You know, accidentally you can do that. So let's go from the beginning up to there. And then exactly the same chromatic note. We've got an E natural seventh fret of the A string leading to the F. And then, really slowly, we've got E flat, F, back to the E flat, and then the C on the eighth fret of the E string. Again, I'm using fingers one and three, but sometimes I'll use my little finger as well. It doesn't really matter. And we've got a ghost note at the end of that little run there. Practice that bit slowly, a little bit tricky. This is about 111, 112 beats per minute, this song. If it's hard for you, because it is quite tricky, lots of 16th note rhythms going on, just slow it down like I'm doing and build it up over time. So, so far we have this. Then the next bar is almost exactly the same. We just stop on the F there. And there's a slide just from somewhere up here. It doesn't really matter. But you've got to land back on the B flat. So that's the tricky bit. So it's three on beat four, landing on beat one again. With the exception of that little slide out, and going up there to slide down, everything's kind of roughly in this position and your hand isn't moving. So what I'm gonna do now is just go into a little bit of the root movement, the chord progression, some of the notes you can use if you want to add fills. Now someone very kindly wrote on one of my videos, a little short on this recently, 
And they were like, yeah, he's completely ruining the song. Because in that short, I was doing kind of lots of fills to like, you know. And you know, it's probably right. I probably was ruining the song by playing those fills. If you're doing this on a gig, you probably do want to stick to the groove and that's always good. But I like to show you some other things you can do, you know, for this song or to translate it to other songs. So here we go. Look, we're in the key of F natural minor. The notes are F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, and F. So the fourth note is B flat, the fifth note is C, and that one, the first note, is F minor. And that's the root movement, so four, five, one, that's how you would say it. It's a four, five, one chord progression in F minor. All those chords are minor if you look at the chord symbols here. I find this kind of thing helps to understand music, to be able to expand a bit, to able to make, be able to make your own bass lines, jam, improvise, but also memorize this song, because I know the scale. There's the four, the five, and there's the one, okay? And that's that chromatic note. Notes that aren't in the key are chromatic. And chroma means color, so you're adding color. A bit jazzy there, you know, to lead in to the next chord. Like a, like a semitone half step below. And if you listen to Jimmy Williams play, like I said, he does a number of different things. And here is really the trick, just to know the F minor pentatonic scale. So in this position here, we've got frets uh, six to eight on the E, A and D strings. That's the position of the F minor pentatonic notes, which are F, A flat, B flat, C, E flat. Those are the notes here. So where I'm going. I think he does something like that. So a little slide from six to eight on the A string. Then I'm playing the A flat on the sixth fret of the D string. And then the same movement just on the E to A string. The only other thing I need to teach you to make this complete is to teach you the intro, so it goes. Now in terms of notes, we've got like an A flat mixolydian here. A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat. This is the thing, you know, learn your patterns, learn your scales, you'll hear and see the same things cropping up all the time. And when I'm playing this song live, I just fall back on this very familiar shape. It's like a major scale with a flat seven. So it goes from the high A flat. You're just descending those notes. You're going A flat, G flat, F, E flat. That's frets six, four, and three on the D string, and then six on the A string. And a little hammer on, frets four to six. That's the D flat to the A flat to the E flat. Little triad I think he's doing there. A flat, C, E flat. Very similar, it goes on a bit. Then it goes to an F, that's the chord before the actual main bass line. If you're playing along to the original, before they go to that section again, and it's like a bridge section, you'll hear a little drum fill. Now, if you're playing this live, hopefully the drummer will do that, and that's your cue. If not, you just have to count, listen to the original, and count how many times you go around the riff. But so the next time it comes out of this, it goes. So that's like twice around, then it goes. The A flat. Similar to the beginning, but it's a bit more sort of low quarter note A flat. So that really is the whole song. It's an absolutely brilliant bass line, lots of intricate touches, ghost notes, slides. It's it's a very good example of a of a part of a hook that just sort of goes round and round and round. It isn't an easy bass line, so get this together slowly. A very, very good goal for you would be to play along 
to the original, to the record, okay? You don't have to get all the exact same touches that Jimmy Williams did in the same places. You just have to get the vibe and get the groove and then you can sort of make it your own. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. I'm gonna put another video right here about sort of how to make bass lines up. That's where I was headed with showing you the the four, five, one chord progression if you wanna get more into that side of things. How to create bass lines, you know, from theory, but also rhythms, melodies, all kinds of other aspects of music. Subscribe to the channel, check out that video, and any questions, let me know.